So we're here today with Adam Moore, who is running for State House. Uh, Adam, welcome to Moving Kentucky Forward. Thanks. I'm I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to be someone who's working to move Kentucky forward. Yes. Um, so just for the sake of our listeners and watchers, you are running for State House in uh, what district? The number is 45. It's the 45th district. It is a lot of Western Lexington, and it's also some of Jesma County. It's got some of Wilmore and some of Nicholasville in it as well. Okay. And the incumbent is Killian Timoney. Is that correct? That is. And he is being primaried by our founding father, Thomas Jefferson. So it's an interesting race. I saw that. I I will be fascinated to see how many votes Thomas Jefferson gets in that primary. He's got a lot of name ID, Bruce, whatever that counts for. Name recognition is high. Yes. Um, So you do not have a primary. So you're running and I'm going to assume for the sake of argument that Killian Timoney is going to win his primary against Thomas Jefferson. So uh, what prompted you to decide to run for this office? No, that's a great question. I'm someone who I think, like many people, really kind of got disenfranchised after 2016 and the direction that our country has gone into and really seeing the flip here in Kentucky. I think Trump brought so many people in with him. And with President Trump, you came almost this nastiness and this hyper division. And I was someone who it's easy to make memes and post on Facebook or post on Instagram about it, but I wanted to do something. So uh, I've been been trying to be more active by joining groups like Kentuckians for the Commonwealth here locally. And I've joined uh, the Fayette County Democratic Executive Committee, but nobody ran for this seat in 2022. And so I don't think there's anything that's special about me. I, we can go into my history if you want. But I know I'm better than no one. I tell you that. Um, But no, for a healthy democracy, people need a choice. And we're talking about Lexington, Kentucky, one of our our bluer spots in the state to have no Mm -hmm. one with a D next to their name running. We need to give people a good choice. And so I just asked my wife if it's okay, And she said, as long as she doesn't have to be a politician and she can keep living her life, then I can do it. So that's what I'm doing. Good. Um, Okay. well, let's get this out of the way. What do you do for a living? I'm a health and fitness coach now. I kind of took a a winding road to get here. I was in politics as a young man. I studied foreign policy and political science at Murray Mm -hmm. State. I actually interned for Senator McConnell. I worked for Ed Whitfield in the U.S. Congress for a couple of years. Didn't really care for the Capitol Hill environment. I felt like it was all performative, a big dog and pony show where nothing ever got accomplished. Yeah. Um, I enlisted in the Army at at that point. I served uh, six years in the Army, um, half that time active, half that time as a reservist. And uh, and then, yeah, I've transitioned from then uh, into project management and then now as a fitness coach for the last, I hope, seven to eight years now. Wow. Wow. That's a yes, that is definitely a winding road, but it also gives you a lot of different experience to bring to the table, including being a veteran and the background in the studies you did and so on and so forth. Um, Absolutely. So uh, without naming a number, how is the fundraising going? It's going uh, it's going well. I think I got off to a really strong start. Um, You may have heard uh, my name at some point in last year. I started trying to raise money in 2023. I'm someone who I didn't want to sit on my hands and twiddle my thumbs and say, I hope no one gets in. I decided if I was going to do it, I was going to take it seriously. So I started Mm -hmm. calling family and friends fitness clients, and we were able to raise a good chunk of money. You can go, anyone can go into KRAF. That's all public. We sure. raised a, we raised a little over $17,000 in 2023. Wow. So it gave us a good little egg there. Um, I think that that slowed down a little around the holidays as it was the holidays. People had expenses and mm-hmm. I tried not to call people during the holidays. And so now I'm just starting to ramp things back up. And I'm excited because I think people see this seat as one of the flippable ones. Now, if the person at the top of the ticket is wearing an orange jumpsuit in November, we might have a blue wave in the fall. But given the status quo, you know, as far as just where Kentucky is a fairly conservative and red state, I think we're smart to say, OK, we, let's try to flip them where we can. And I think the 45th district is a perfect opportunity where we can flip a seat in our state house. Yeah, I agree, uh, particularly the demographics of where you are and so on and so forth. Um, do you do you have staff yet? We have a a campaign consultant, uh, and then we've reached out to a couple of people about fundraising. And then we also have a good list of growing volunteers and some of whom might grow into kind of a campaign manager role. But the biggest important thing has been that consultant and they've helped me do a lot of the, we've already filmed our first digital thing. Uh, We have Mm. one video on YouTube from our campaign launch. 
And we also have some palm cards that we've got made and printed and we have the website up. But that's kind of where we stand on the professional side of things so far. I really like your uh, tagline. Uh, I think it's effective and it certainly gets the name out there. Kentucky deserves more. Uh, it's it's an excellent choice. You need to thank your parents for naming you more back, you know, when you were born. I'm not uh, sure how much say they had in, in the last name, but I'll I'll send my my thanks on to them, Bruce. Yeah. So okay, so you got all the basics. It sounds like in place. Um, what's your message? What I, I'm assuming you're door knocking or or have been door knocking. So what's your message to the voters of your district about why they should choose you over Killian Timoney? No, that's a great question. The first thing is we have there are more registered Republicans than there are registered Democrats in this district. That's the facts of it. Um, and that's why this district has not flipped yet. But there are so many issues that do not need to have a D or an R next to their name. We all want our children to have good schools, good public schools. That does not need to be a Democratic issue. We want to be safe in our communities. That does not need to be a Democratic or Republican issue. And so the, the thing, number one, is someone who's running who will definitely be in the minority caucus. We have to say we can find common ground on these important things. Now, moving into the things that are a little bit more progressive, I like to say that I really, really identify with the type of person that Governor Bashir is. I, not just as Governor Bashir, but as Andy. And, and I love that he is someone who leads with love and with compassion and with acceptance. And when he's governor, he is governor for everyone. He is not just governor for the people who voted for him. Eastern Kentucky, Western Kentucky, rich, poor, um, white, black, Republican, Democrat. He is someone who I think leads with kindness. And I think that's what I want to be. And that means actually looking out for women's rights and fairness for all. And that means looking for treatment over incarceration for those who may have found themselves battling addiction. I think there are so many things that he has led by example. And I'm not trying to be just my holy, my holy own independent person. I think Governor Bashir has provided a great example. And I say that I truly want to emulate kind of his messaging and the person that he has led as. And that's kind of the message at the doors um, that I've been trying to make more clear. So, um, I'm not familiar with your district in terms of Amendment 2 uh, two years ago. Are you going to push on uh, women's rights and reproductive rights? Uh, and are you doing that at the door? Yes. So on my palm card, it's actually the first bullet point. It is restoring women's basic reproductive rights. That is mm -hmm. the number one point on the card that people are getting. And we saw that no on two was over 60% in this district. So we know that Killian, who voted not just um, in support of House Bill 3 in 2022. He also voted against House 4 Amendment 5 to that bill. And I know I'm getting in the weeds here for the listeners, but that was the proposed amendment that would have allowed for rape and incest exceptions, basically the, the lowest possible bar that you could have added. He voted against that amendment, and then he voted for that outlawing of abortion in our state. So I'm happy to make sure people are aware of that. And, and I'm definitely running on women's rights, their liberties, and their justice. So... A sentence would be Killian Timoney voted to ban abortion and voted against exceptions for rape and incest. And that's 100 percent accurate. Yeah, that's a strong point, I think. Um, what else? Uh, so you mentioned uh, fairness. I I don't know if if your LGBTQ space is strong around Lexington. I think it is. Um, does that come up at all on the doorstep? I talk about how we need to make sure that everyone has equal rights. And and I don't even I don't lead with fairness, but it's right on my website. If someone goes to they they click on the QR code on there, they go to Kentucky deserves more dot com. They'll see fairness for all on there. And that, you know, there are approximately one hundred forty four thousand LGBTQ Kentuckians and that they are our neighbors. They are our family members. They are right. our co-workers. And fairness does not mean that they get a leg up. It means that they just get equal rights that the rest of us have, that they don't get discriminated in housing. They don't get discriminated in healthcare. They don't get discriminated in insurance or these other things. Uh, and that's what fairness means to me. I don't think I'm going to win this race because of fairness. I don't think that's what's going to win at the doors. But I'm someone who wants to be open and transparent. And I believe we need to love everyone equally. Um. So what demographically the space you're in i mean you said lexington and then some you know some other places uh how is it in terms of walkability uh, are the houses close enough together that you can really knock out some houses when you're walking or is this uh horse country and the houses are like three miles apart or something it's a great question so it two answers if you look at land area most of the land area is rural 
but about 88% of the registered voters are in the suburbs and they have sidewalks and they have neighborhoods. So I've actually started uh, getting out and knocking doors in neighborhoods. So a lot of it is walkable, but also we do have some horse country in there too. And I'll be honest, um, some of those people may get phone calls instead of door knocks, but I want people to know that I value every single person and I'm going to do my best to get out there, even if you're a little off the beaten path, to know that your vote is just as valuable as someone who lives in a more easily walkable precinct. Have you gotten any uh, responses along the lines of, I won't vote for a Democrat no matter what? Yes, um, there are some people who I think have bought into kind of the right wing media narrative that literally the Democrats are evil. And with those people, I say, well, I'm glad that we're having this conversation so you can meet me uh, and we can disagree on some of the solutions to America's problems. But I want you to know that I'll miss someone who I'm your neighbor. I live in the neighborhood right over here. And, and I at least am someone who wants to be a decent and kind human being. And at the end of the day, you might choose never to vote for a Democrat. But it's important that we have these conversations, that you understand that we, with the DNX or name, are real and decent human beings. And, and we're trying to help just like we know that you think your Republicans are as well. OK, um, what's your strategy in terms of winning? Uh, are you going after just Democrats? Have you spent any time door knocking with independents or non-voters or are you basically focused on people who vote regularly? If I go after just Democrats, we will lose. Um, that is not going to be a winning strategy. Uh, if you look at the the breakdown of my district, it's about 45 percent registered Republicans, about 41 percent registered Democrats, and then the rest are independent or other. So no one has an outright majority. Uh, I am knocking on the doors of my persuadable universe first. So those who are listening, if they aren't to where you have basically your safe Dems, your safe Republicans, and then your third persuasion universe. Um, I am starting with the people I need to persuade first because I am hoping that the message will get out there and my Democrats will help come home to me. I am going off those people who may have felt left behind by the Democratic Party in the past, mm. and I'm here to build those bridges early. How about uh, non-voters or rare voters? Are you including them in your uh, universe? So we the if the lower your likelihood is of voting, I'm probably not going to knock on your door unless you are someone who is more inclined to vote Democratic. So to oversimplify it, if you're pretty likely to vote, but you're not a for sure Republican, I'm going to knock on your door. If you are pretty for sure Democrat, but you may not be as likely to vote, I'm going to knock on your door. If you're definitely voting and you're definitely voting Republican, I'm probably not knocking. And yeah. if you're definitely voting and you're definitely Democrat, I'm probably only knocking toward the end of the campaign during the get out the vote push. Um, you mentioned your fundraising, which sounds strong for 2023, and I hope it continues to be strong. Do you have any idea what was spent when there was a race in 2020? What did Timoney spend that year? I'm glad that you brought up the campaign finance thing. Um, so the last person who ran in this uh, district as a Democrat was Shirley Mitchell. So I'll give you her number first. Her campaign spent about $101,000. They raised about 50000 of that on their own. And then they got about 50000 of that from the state party. And I think some of that was in kind of from the McGrath campaign because she had so much money. Um, Killian reported raising $27,000 and spending $21,000. It's my understanding that essentially he will not campaign much and he will rely on the state party to essentially do his campaigning, his fundraising and everything for him, mm -hmm. um, which really rubs me the wrong way. I'm getting out there and I'm trying to earn people's votes. I'm earning it at the doorstep and I'm earning it on the phone and I'm trying to earn the dollars. I'm trying to earn the votes. And it seems to me that he is complacent to allow the Republican Party to decide what the message is for him, to decide who to mail for him and to get out the vote for him so that he doesn't really have to do much. Um, he seems to be an incredibly nice guy. I'm not here to besmirch him or say he's a mean person at all. But given the people I've talked to in the neighborhood, given the people I've talked to in the district, most people say that they've never met him. He's never called them. He's never mailed them. He's never knocked on their door. Um, and that is a clear line of distinction between himself and myself. That just seems like a really good line of messaging. Uh, I'm here and he's not. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, so are there any other policy positions to speak of that you want to uh, talk about? Yeah, I, I really appreciate that because there are certain things that we're going to hammer over and over again. We're going to talk about key public dollars in public schools. We're going to talk about restoring women's reproductive rights. We're going to talk about making sure that um, our, our workers are protected. There's a huge war on our state's workers going on in the state house right now between 
House Bill 255, House Bill 367, House Bill 500. Well, I'm going to hammer that a lot. Things that I think are, I don't want to say unique to me, but that are very passionate to me is restoring um, the democratic rights to people who have served their time. What we see is that we know that Governor Bashir has been able to pardon or not pardon, but has been able to restore voting rights to some Kentuckians who've served mm-hmm. their time. But that is that can be taken away by the next governor. It could be overridden by the state legislature. I would love to restore basic democratic rights to those who have repaid their debt to society. Um, I really want to work for a, a treatment over an incarceration model for our nonviolent offenders. Um, the Save for Kentucky Act aims to reduce crime in in our state by locking up more people. Mm -hmm. It does not seek to do anything but actually reducing, eliminating, resolving the root causes of crime, which are poverty or recidivism by not taking care of people who could be treated or healed, who instead just get locked up instead. So those are a couple of things that are really important to me. Wow, it sounds really good. I'm excited to hear all of this from you, and I'm excited to think about the fact that you could flip this seat, which I think you're right is very flippable. I think, I think I would love to see you in the state house. Um, so I have a couple of last questions. First of all, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Oh my goodness, um, great question. No, I, I think I want to come in on here with an open mind. I'm glad you asked me kind of things that were important to me. One thing I would want to put out to your listeners is that, again, we, we both talked about this is a district thing that can be flipped. I knocked about, uh, I had him look it up. I knocked over 800 doors for Governor Bashir in this district, and he won this district by 20.7 points. It was something like 61 to 39. And the last two people who've run for this state house seat have lost 51 to 49. I want your listeners to know that we are right on the edge of knocking this district over, that we can flip it, uh, and that we we should absolutely want every single Democrat running up and down the ballot, if they're a good candidate, to win their race. And I want to make sure that everyone who's watching this and is listening to this knows that we are on the doorstep right now, and, and I believe it's my job to push this district over the finish line. Excellent. Okay, so the last question that I always ask candidates uh, is, you're standing on my door, you've knocked on my door, And I've come to the door and we've talked briefly and I say, all right, tell me why I should vote for you. What's your answer? We need more decency. We need more compassion in our state government. And I think right now the people are in the government are in there for their own power and they're looking out for themselves and not for their constituents. I want to be someone who doesn't just represent you, Bruce. I want to represent everyone in your neighborhood, everyone in your district, everyone in your precinct, because we're all in this together. That's exactly what Governor Bashir says. We're all in this together. And that's the message. It is that you may disagree with me on this point or that point. But at the end of the day, it's about helping Kentuckians live in the best life that they can here in this state. And we can work together to accomplish that vision. And that's why I'm asking you to vote for me, not just because I want to represent you. It's because I want to represent all of us. Excellent. Um, Adam Moore running for uh House of Representatives against Killian Timoney, right out, right in Lexington and outside Lexington. Thank you for coming on the show. And uh, I will put a link to your website. Uh, I assume the donate button is on your website as well. Absolutely. And I definitely encourage your listeners to click on that button. All right. I will put all that on there. And we uh, really appreciate you being here and good luck. Well, maybe I can bring you back again as a newly elected state rep. That sounds great. I appreciate it, Bruce.